Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to American Farming. I'm your host, the Rental Man Buck. And today we are going to be doing some corn harvest on what I would call my millionaire save with the brand new 715 Case IH quad track. Look to the 2850 Pulser grain cart, a 2800 bushel grain cart. That thing is huge. I mean, think about it. This dude's like six foot tall, which means that's already like a foot and a half taller than me, but still, that's gigantic. Running into the back shed, I just kind of had some tools that I used while I was getting the field planted because we are going to be harvesting the giant field that is shaped like a half-eaten Pop-Tart. It is the biggest field in the game, but with two 12 rows and two 82 40s, I think we're going to be able to eat through that corn at least faster than I'd hope so. Since Squad Built's latest update, we did get the brand new truck line that came out in the Big Truck DLC. So Daryl now has retained his Silverado, just it's blue instead of red. Once uh, we're able to maybe customize the color of that, Daryl's truck will definitely be red like it is in Farm Sim. Corey's Dodge, Kevin's Chevy, and then my Ford. Which, speaking of my Ford, I'm going to take this thing, since mine, mine may or may not roll coal. I might have deleted it. We're going to get hooked up to my headers, head down to the Pop-Tart, and we'll set Daryl up so that way he can start working the head lens, and we can move the 715 down. But if you guys like content like this and would love to see more, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe down below. As you do know, we are on the race to 100,000 public subscribers by the end of this year. My only thing that I'm not too fond of on this game so far, and I know from at least being able to program farm sim mods, I can't imagine actually programming programming a game, is the fact that I can only hire one combine at a time. Believe me, if I could, I'd be having both of these 12 rows running at full steam the entire time. We'll open up our field and then we'll get hopefully Daryl to start out since he's my number one combine operator besides Kevin, but Kevin usually prefers the older equipment. Daryl is off to the races. Let's go get the other one and the 715 and get our show on the road. We'll just use Daryl's truck to pull the other header. There's no biggie. It's got enough power to pull this thing. At least I'd hope a Duramax does. But let me know down in the comments, guys. How are you enjoying American Farming if you have played it so far? I actually love it. I, when I get some time to play it, it really actually is just pretty fun. But I am looking to possibly get a new phone since I, uh, my phone's probably about four or five years old. And between the camera and the battery life, <laughs> sometimes this phone just makes me want to drop kick something. So if you guys do see some stuttering every now and then with like lag, that that's kind of just my phone saying like, nah, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. Stop playing on me. Now we're at the main event. For any of you that don't know, I actually got to see this tractor in person at Farm Progress last year in Decatur, Illinois. The thing was absolutely massive. I saw one of the Balzer wagons, though, when I went to the Kentucky, I think it was that National Farm Machinery Show. And I was like dumbfounded with how big that wagon actually was. But I've been planting with this tractor earlier this morning and it had no problems pulling that 36 row. It definitely has the power, and of course, we already got to get ourselves running. I didn't expect him to get too far. Let's see how far he actually got. Let's see, where on earth might I find a grain hopper? I'm looking for a grain hopper. Dang, he actually made it pretty far because I both sprayed and applied uh, P and K. Good job, Case, you did pretty good. And I started them correctly, so the auger was actually on the right side. I got three semis waiting back at the shed, but this cart holds just under three semi loads, and I got 3,300 bushel worth of trailers I could store this with. One thing about this big K715 is that it is a part of the big equipment pack, so you guys will have to get the DLC to unlock this tractor. It costs $1 million. Don't expect it to be anywhere cheap. But I will say, on the farm, this has to be the best-looking tractor that the game has had so far. I, when I saw this thing, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a big case guy for the design. Mainly due to the saying, like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They ran with the same design since, like, 2009. And then they finally, like, gave it this massive new front end. And I'm just saying, it. this tractor looks phenomenal. Definitely gonna be using this for some videos. I mean, even the interior on this thing, it just, it looks good. I like it. Kudos to Squad Build for getting this tractor out before Farm Sim. Good job, boys. We're gonna let Daryl continue finishing up the headlands. I'm gonna run up to the shed, grab our other two trucks. Well, actually three. 
That feels like absurdly huge. And I know that with a 36 row planner, it made like three passes, but they were like overlaid. It's going to take me a few minutes to get this thing done. <laughs> Also in the new update, we received three brand new semis. I have one of them, but you just cannot beat the cab over. I'm sorry, I would have ran the Ford or the newer modified Peterbilt, but eh, not a huge fan of the modifieds. And as much as I love the Ford semi, its frame was just way too long for my liking, like for being a, a day cab. If the frame of the Ford truck was as long as the one that's on this Kenworth, I would use it so much more because Ford actually did make a good semi. But we have one Kenworth, one Peterbilt, and I believe that cab over is actually a Freightliner. I'm pretty certain of it because it does not have the drop in the window like a Kenworth normally does, unless the cab overs did not have that. I don't know, I'd have to check. I did not check before the time of saying that in this video. <laughs> Daryl's already on his second start to the headland. When he hopefully gets around, he might do one more. If he does one more, then we'll wait to start the second combine. But when we can start going doing rows, I'll jump in one of these and we'll cut a couple rows on our end. Let's go grab that cab over because that actually has one feature that is brand new to our updates. That being the rolling coal animation. I don't have it on the Peterbilt and I don't have it on the Kenworth as you could select it in the stores. But the Freight Shaker's got an attitude when she gets up and goes. Let her rip, tater chip. Yeah. And then once it gets up to speed, it dies down. But that's that's really cool. I like the rolling coal animation. However, Daryl is full and it is also for some odd reason becoming nighttime. Even I could have sworn I stopped the clock at the beginning of the day. Let's get Daryl emptied. I'll dump this off in the semis and we'll keep on clicking. Looking back in, the good news is Daryl is starting on the row entries. The bad news is my skipping towards day did not work like I thought it would. I accidentally skipped all the way to May. On the other hand, because we have more good news than bad news, so therefore it evens out all of our problems. But the crop does not wither, so we can harvest this at really any time. Benefits of not having crop withering. I also did end up selling a lot of the stuff back at the farm that we weren't technically going to be using today. This that way I can save on space until I technically can have the gameplay with everything and not have any slowdowns. Don't tell me, don't tell me I'm going to fill both of those trucks. I was going to say, I swear I didn't have enough in there to fill two trucks yet. Since Daryl is starting on the row entries though, we're going to put Kevin and Corey in the trucks and I am going to grab our other combine. I am going to start working on the bottom right part of the field and Daryl is working on the top left. Where exactly we're going to meet up, I have yet to decipher. I also don't know. Nope, that was not the right area to pass through. I think I'll take the bite and start here, and I'll see if it was the right row in the end. Probably wasn't, but hey, we always got to pick at some point, right? Heading back into the comments section, though, let me know down below, what crop do you guys do more of in American farming? Are you more of a corn farm, or are you more of a bean farm? Or... Are you also one of those people that really does the livestock? I have yet to dive into the livestock. I know Nate, Fearsome Rhino, does it. I just never really took the time to figure it out. The best way to say it is I wouldn't expect any animal content from me in this game just because I don't really know what I'm doing and I don't really want to sit down and figure out how to do it. You know, you can see Daryl though on the opposite side. He's on a turn of the round. He's probably made two passes at this point. We, on the other hand, are going to flip around because we ran to the end of our row. And I think as long as we can get this portion in on the left side, we can go all the way down. How full am I? Oh, I'm not even close to full. Also, nowhere close to the end of the line. I thought I was going to say something sacrilegious, but then I remembered the guy who owns this thing actually does have both brands. Besides Daryl being full, but if you guys have not already, check out Andy of Andy Clean with his Andy Clean Farm Soap. We keep everything on this farm as Andy Clean as possible. Farming does not have to be dirty. But be sure to check out Andy Clean. Link down below if you guys want to check out his merchandise. But also your local John Deere dealer and pick yourself up a jug of Andy Clean. I got to go empty out Daryl though because 
Uh, the, the joke where the guy's like honking, like, move, buddy, and then I'm like, oh, wait, I'm running that too? Yeah, that that's me right now. This is the part where I really wish that I could hire two, at least two combines at the same time, because this field, how much have we taken out? Oh, we haven't even really scratched the surface yet. Okay, we got some corn to cut. In the rows again. I can just feel the compaction coming off this wagon. Why fight others making music with my friends? I can't wait to get in the rows again. I mean, on the bright side, it's trying to stay in the rows, but those tires, those tires just don't care. Sorry, if you're, if you're a cornstalk within a five foot radius of this thing, you might as well sign your will and testimony. Bye bye. With Daryl being empty, we might as well run over and get mine dumped out just to stay on top of it. I will probably be filling up pretty quickly. And you guys see just how big this field really is. I was going to try and run two 16 row heads, but uh, yeah. Good luck keeping up with that. I don't care if this thing holds 3,000 bushel, 10,000 bushel, or even 500 bushel. You ain't keeping up with two 16 row headers with the way this stuff is pulling for yield. Speaking of yield, we are going to have to see how well this actually does when we sell it in market. There'll be a lot of bushels that are coming out of this field. And usually it's a pretty good price uh, since it's, you know, not in the middle of December when you should be harvesting and selling this stuff. Or November. Or October. Or when you started in September. <laughs> in the rows again. I just can't wait to get in the rows again. The one thing I do wish I had was a yield monitor to see how well this corn actually is pulling. Overall, this tractor, I'm I'm really just impressed. I haven't had any issues with it yet. The only real thing I could say maybe could be tweaked on this tractor is its fuel economy. It just seems like it might be pulling a little too much fuel compared to, say, the other quad track, but I could be wrong. I haven't really used any of the big four-wheel drive, so I don't necessarily have any way to say I've tested it. And if my eyes are correct, this is why I always say Daryl is my best combine operator. Is that pipe that's sitting out on the right side? Holy cow, it is. This this is why Daryl is my favorite combine operator. This man literally has the pipe out to the correct side. I think only once have I ever had Daryl where he did not put the pipe out to the correct side on the combine. Like it's not in the crops and I have to drive over him. Those two trucks, though, are full, so let's run those up to the grain bin silo, start getting that corn dried out so it can be ready for sale, and we don't get docked because of moisture. Something tells me a person in California is about to have a panic attack in 3, 2, 1. Oh, yeah. I don't think the EPA would uh, confirm this thing to be driving on the road anytime soon. I love this truck. Ah, uh, yes, I forgot. This is a fancy bin. We'll dump that, and I don't know. Okay, up there's the corn dryer. Pretty sure it's cheaper if we dry the corn as we go. With that activated, let's return to the field, grab the other trucks, and let's dump them all off. Or at least we'll dump the Kenworth since that's the other one that's full. Both combines have been unloaded. I have at least one truck now full. I guarantee you this will probably fill up a second and possibly even part of a third since this wagon was, I think, I think somewhere around 90% full. Oh yeah, easily gonna be filling into the third truck. But that wasn't that bad. Looks as though Daryl is going to be starting his long part of the passes. If we look in on our gigantic field, I might do a few passes more on the far side and then I'll just worry about shipping trucks. I would say we have about a third of the field done, maybe a little bit more. And I think I'll actually save that for a part two of the massive harvest. So thank you all so much for checking this part one out of American Farming. If you guys want to see more content based on this game, be sure to let me know down in the comments down below. Without further ado, though, that is going to do it for me, guys. Be sure to check out the Boomstick Club for all the up-to-date content from me and the gang. You already know who is in it. I shall see you all in the next one. This is the Rental Man out. Peace.